Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Sammy Fleck here once again and Freeze Control. I hope you guys have been good. And today I'm going to be talking about the effects of learning a new language on the brain. Basically the bilingualism, the effect of bilingualism on the brain and the neuroplasticity of the brain. So if you love this type of videos or you want to see more videos on science, technology, educative videos, informative videos, debunking myths and misconceptions, make sure to subscribe and make sure to like this video. And if there's anything you want to tell me or you want me to know or any fun thing you know, notice about this video, make sure to drop it down in the comment section below. And don't forget to share this video to your friends that actually might be interested in this type of videos. So moving into the topic today, before I actually dive in, I would like to discuss what actually is bilingualism and what actually is neuroplasticity or plasticity of the brain. Bilingualism is a situation or a phenomenon in which a person, an individual or group of people could actually understand or speak two or more languages at the same time. Meaning it doesn't just have to be two, going from the name bilingualism. Sometimes it's also called multilingualism. So it could mean someone speaking and understanding three, four, five or six languages at the same time. Now, what actually is neuroplasticity? Over the years, some people actually believed that, or scientists, due to lack of technology, then believed that the brain actually develops to a particular stage and then starts deteriorating. But as the years went on and development of technology and uh, neurology, we were able to understand the fact that the brain actually undergoes biological changes every single time something new is done to the brain. So this is the plasticity of the brain in the sense that the brain undergoes changes ranging from the neural level, the cellular level, the neurons of the brain to actually cortical remapping, the highest form of brain plasticity. I continue, let me just chip this here. If you're loving the video already or you're loving the channel and you've not liked this video or subscribed to this channel, make sure you do that immediately. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video, and make sure you comment please comment on that whatever you think i should know about you should please comment in the comment section below it helps this video to fight against the algorithm youtube's algorithm and makes it suggested to more people and so i get more viewers so back to the topic there's actually no confusion in us relating learning a new language to the brain because practically everything we do all our body is controlled by the brain but there are some specific benefits for bilingualism, the effects of bilingualism on the brain. Apart from it makes us get smarter and makes the brain better, it also delays the onset of some diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's disease, which have to do with memory. And this was confirmed by a study carried out in the University of Edinburgh in 2013. They carried it out on some Indian, a tribe in India, and they had about 648 people go through this study and they discovered that people who were bilingual actually had the disease but later people who were susceptible to the disease eventually had the disease but they had it later because they were bilinguals now coming to the brain specifically every single part of the brain is important and functional to human living and human activities but well, it's been confirmed and researched that a person's native language the person learns from infancy is actually stored on the left hemisphere of the brain and this has to do with 90 percent of the population and this is 90 percent and not 100 percent because of anatomical variation in the sense that some people are actually people are actually different and that can be frustrating to medical students because to learn something normal and ideal in an anatomy textbook is and everything but when we go out there it's actually different as people vary anatomically in between themselves now coming to the main part of the brain that is involved in language processes there are two main parts the broca's area and the wernicke's area the broca's area is actually located on the left frontal lobe which is concerned with language articulation and production and the other part is the wernicke's area which is located on the left temporal lobe which is associated with language development and comprehension remember i said most of a person's native language is stored on the left hemisphere but researchers have actually found out that language learning and articulation comprehension and everything is a complex process of the brain not actually stop only on the left hemisphere of the brain and sometimes some things actually concern the right part of the brain and other parts of the brain also and this brings us to the discussion of the corpus callosum this is a small body that actually links the right and the left hemisphere of the brain together now learning a language actually involves critical stages and elements some important stages and elements and this was explained by dr ping lee he is a professor of linguistic and psychology in Pennsylvania state university he explains that full knowledge of the language actually involves remembering the words that's the lexicon 
being able to write that's the orthography being able to express yourself in that language that's a pragmatic getting familiar with the grammar also is syntax being able to produce sound or speaking in that language is actually the phonology and that brings us to the reason why learning of a language is not actually restricted to the only the left area but also the right area because these complex processes that i just listed that actually make the brain to activate different complex parts like the frontal the cortical area and other parts of the brain now just before i go to the final portion of this video this is a fun fact researchers have actually confirmed and found out that in young adults they perform study and they found out that young adults who are actually bilingual or speak more than two languages or three or so actually perform better in comprehension tests and attention tests than people who are monolingual in the sense that the ability to speak these languages actually help them to be to be better at comprehension and to be better at attentiveness and this brings me to the final portion of this video remember there was a time i spoke in one of my videos when i was talking about dopamine that the way you exercise and make your muscles stronger and better actually is the same thing that happens to the brain when we work out we try and make our muscles better and they increase in size and get better due to hypertrophy and this is the same thing that actually happens to the brain in the sense that when you make your brain work when you make your brain do some things it creates new neural pathways and as such it gets the brain better and gets the brain smarter in the sense that when you learn a new language it increases the density of the gray matter increases the volume of of of, of the white matter and eventually makes the brain bigger and makes the, the brain creates small foldings and it eventually gets the brain to be smarter now here's the thing about the language actually learning a new language is not actually difficult for the brain it's not as difficult as the part i'm about to talk about now the difficult part for the brain is actually switching between these languages so let's say i speak two languages now i speak english and i speak french speaking to my friend who only understands english and i speak in english and my other friend comes and he only understands french and i'm able to actually speak to him in french again this process of switching between english and french completely is actually what is difficult for the brain because the brain might sometimes try to use some words from a different language in a different language so if the brain is perfect at doing these things or gets better at switching between the languages trust me the brain has gotten extremely smarter and it's overcome the biggest or difficult hurdle about learning the language just before we go if you have decided to learn a new language in 2020 or you're confused about which language to learn i'll link it up there the video i talked about the languages you can learn the top 10 languages you can learn in 2020 i myself already started learning spanish and i personally use duolingo and it's actually the best for me i also have a video on the best apps to actually use to study language and these apps are actually free that's been it thank you guys for watching i hope you guys love the video don't forget to subscribe don't forget to give a thumbs up to the video don't forget to comment down and don't forget to share this video to people who might be interested in this video Thank you. Catch you guys in the next video. Peace.